The following audio is intended for mature audiences and contains adult content, graphic language, graphic violence, and strong sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Fedoria, everyone. My name is Tony, otherwise known as Slade. I am your, going, your DM for the evening. Uh, with me are my three players, uh, starting from the top, Eli. Hello. Follow up Just with me. Hacksaw. Well, hello there. And last but not least, Mayhem93. You want to suck my dick? Oh, God. Well, General Kenobi. Well, hello, hello there. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be a meme be at this point. But anyway, so you're trying to suck my dick, son. I apologize oh. for the fucking R-rated turn that that took in. Not even three minutes into the episode. All right, so last we left off, you guys basically went and beat the living shit out of Vorak. You, uh, the Who? three of you, were traveling as your kobold selves, and to find the last two items that you needed, which was the black dog blood. And the moot moot root, and you manage to find <laughs> both of those items by single handedly defeating all of the enemies that I had planned for you. It was literally a bloodbath. Uh, but now, you guys are back to your original characters, and this is where you guys are at now. I forgot the best part. What did I forget? Like, no joke, you forgot, forget? you forgot what happened at the end of our adventure. Oh, yeah, you yeah, mean really the fact hard. that... Yes, you can't can, skip that part, bro. Mayhem, Mayhem basically defiled himself and within, like, uh, milliseconds uh, whoa, whoa. and whoa. turned himself into a sex slave. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, that uh, is kind exactly of what happened. That, that kind Damn. of explains why in Discord it says he's watching 13 Reasons Why Season 4. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, I mean, shut the fuck up. It okay. is a great show. That fourth season show. snuck up on everybody. Nobody was expecting that. Okay, oh. I didn't defile anything, especially myself. I killed a clanmate trying to kill that asshole chief, and then my friends decided, to shoot, me, decided to shoot me with fireworks. Like, like, okay, so here's the deal. Like, kobolds are tribal-based. They base their entire philosophy around serving their leader and doing everything that they can in order to make sure that their leader has what they need and want. And then all of a sudden, this random kobold decides, hey, guess what, guys? I'm going to kill the second most important person in the freaking tribe just so that I can have his cane. And he wanted I mean, to be I mean, the leader. Cane I is mean, power. Cane I is mean, power. Uh, what was Andoran's official title? Was he not the leader? A leader of your group, basically. Well, but you did not. You did not make that clear when I signed on I as Andoran. I should have to you... make that clear. <laughs> that I'm sorry. Be you, well you tell known. somebody. You tell somebody they're it's the kinda leader. Like, it's kind of like this whole time that we've been recording these episodes, where you keep constantly asking me what the HP of your enemies are, knowing full well that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> like Don't you know. should have known that. Like, who correction. Gives, who gives correction. A who gives Cordera a had an ability that could find out the health of her opponent. I just there chose not there to is that. not an ability in D and D that I know of You're where that it tells you the HP of an enemy. Anyway, that was disturbing. Something that said something like that. Anyway, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, are I you could also ready now, or are we going to keep uh, ranting about how that mayhem is now a sex slave? And I vote right. I vote key run it. All right. So, so... <laughs> I second that. God. <laughs> Alright, so, as you slowly focus, the white cloud of suffocating pain melts away. You find yourself in the heart of a prison cell that, for this moment, feels very unfamiliar to you. You sense a familiar tickle of overindulgence in your throat as the contents of your stomach slowly bubble away. Judging by the taste in your mouth, those contents are mostly ale, pipe smoke, and unicorn shit. You take a look around, discovering that your head can magically still look to the left and right with what you would call certain efficiency. 
It is here that you discover dangling from a rope about a few feet away from each of you in the hallway in front of you, a rather perturbed looking human male watching you with narrowed eyes. You fucking assholes sold me to the kobolds for sex! My tears have literally turned into blood. Your attention turns in another direction as a muffled sound comes from the various cells around you. One can only assume that the rest of the, your party is in one of these cells with you. Thank the gods for small mercies. Now would you kindly get out of that jail cell and get me the hell down? The stranger shouts. Are you the, uh, are you the nobleman? Yes, I'm the fucking nobleman. Now get me down. Is he naked? Yes. Do I have a stick? Must uh, no. Uh, oh. actually, you can roll a, uh, insight check for each of you to see what position you're currently in. He's naked and we're choosing positions now? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I wanted to poke him with a stick. Well, roll an insight Which stick? Roll an insight <laughs> check to see what <laughs> in procurement you're... I got 15. 15? Okay. Uh, Norbit, you are actually tied up at the moment. Oh, uh, you're gagged, but you oh, do gosh. happen to see that next to you, your pigeon that was originally with you, for whatever reason, has suddenly grown like three times its size. I too got a 15. Uh, you are I'm not tied, tied up, Mouse, for some reason. You Like, you literally are able to move around in this jail cell. Ha ha! Uh, and, uh, Norbit got pegged. Uh, what did you get, Rhaegar? I, I got a five. Um, you are just happy to be alive. That How's it going over there trying to throw me? That would that would be a first. <laughs> so, let me get this right. Norbit's tied and gagged. So in other words, you're telling me he got pegged. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> How's it feel to sit down? Your asshole <laughs> looks like a yawning hippo's mouth. Wait, I'm, a, I'm like technically a robot. Do I even have an asshole? Ha, <laughs> ah, you became a sex bot overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm essentially a really fucked up sex doll. Multiple well, holes all in your chassis. <laughs> and my pigeon so grew because of do you have? Do you have a muffler? Like, <laughs> literally, these three idiots are in this jail cell, and the first thing that they come up with is that the robot is a sex doll. Mouse, I go fuck Mouse is just sitting like. there with no clue with anything, and then Rhaegar <laughs> is just happy to be alive for no reason. And like within the my first exhaust few minutes, pipe got violated. Uh, Tony, can I uh can I uh, do a perception check and get a understanding of what's in my surroundings? Uh, yes. I would also like to make a roll sure. of the perception nature. You may do that. <laughs> Same, actually. Sure, go for it. I got the 10, does that mean I see his muffler? I got a 23. I got a 17. Okay. So, I'll start off with Mouse, because Mouse got the lowest. So, Mouse, basically, it's just really simplistic. There's hay everywhere, uh, nothing really to sit on. Uh, there's the jail cell in front of you that's completely locked. Um, can't really get out at all. Uh, Norbit, uh, with a 23... You do see, or you do see everything that uh, Mouse just saw exactly verbatim, but you also hear something coming from the end of the hallway to what would be your right. Um, not again. That is not coming from the guy, the nobleman in the middle. It's not coming from him. You hear noises coming from the right side, not coming from the nobleman. Not Radar, again. Not my exhaust pipe. Rhaegar, uh, you basically, again, you see the same thing. It's just your room is filled with a bunch of hay. You've got this locked cage door in front of you. Uh, you do see the nobleman. He's completely nude. Uh, but you don't really hear much of anything. You just hear this nobleman screaming and Are at we... the top of his lungs at the three of you because he's pissed off at what you guys did. So we don't have our equipment or nothing, right? You have nothing. Clothing? Uh, you do have your clothes on, yes. Can my pi can I get my pigeon to uh, on time somehow? Like by pecking uh, you or can you can try? Yes, uh, I know I'm I can't make... speak because I'm gagged. You can't speak, uh, but it's still... can I heavily imply it. <laughs> you can kind of imply it, yeah. So give yeah. like a persuasion check with disadvantage. I would say. Um. Yeah. All right. 
Would that uh, not be performance? Because he's got to perform like yeah, actions perform to try there and... you go. That's that's actually better. Do performance. You gave me the advantage. worst one I could have done as well. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah, that's actually better. Performance. Oh, I'm not getting worse than a free. Let's be honest. But yeah, you are. Anyway. Yeah, you are. Oh, oh, okay. free. Free. Yeah. So your pigeon is just thinking that you're happy to see him. <laughs> <laughs> is there any I'm way I could take all. like a? Like a really thick piece of straw with one that seems like sturdier than the other ones. Like a straw, though, but it's like a decent piece. And use a sleight of hand to pick the lock with it. Um, I'm going to say that you're going to need to roll a separate perception check to see if you can find something. Okay. Similar to that. And then if you do that, I will allow you to attempt to do a sleight of hand trick. Is there any way that I can just fucking kick down the door? Uh, that would be a strength check. I got a 19. Do I see anything? So, with Mouse's roll, I'm going to say that you managed to find a piece of, like, a, a small piece of metal in the back corner of your, your cage cell that looks to be like you could use it to pick the lock with. Oh, this is, this will be better than using sticks. Uh, what did you oh, get, yeah. Rhaegar, for your strength check? Uh, okay, so I, I didn't realize that if I went into rage before I rolled, I could have had advantage, but I, I rolled. Too late! You too got late! To what did you write, uh, man? Tell the audience rolled, got you roll. I rolled 11. Okay, so what happens is, is that you go and take a full sprint towards this cage door, and uh, you you're an bang asshole. into it. You don't take damage. You do not take damage. But you I'm run into it. this cage door and you fall flat back on your ass. However, when the moment you do that, you hear something, somebody coming down from the end of the hallway. And then you hear the nobleman from the middle uh, hanging up by his feet that's completely new. You hear him go, oh, they're coming. They're coming. I like to go stealth. Uh, roll me a... And I would like to hide the piece of metal. I didn't know. Piece of metal? Oh, hide the piece of metal. I thought you said hide. Yes, yeah. hide it. Okay. Yes, I would like to hide, hide sure. it. Sure, okay. The piece all of right. metal. So, yes, <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> right? Uh, all right, so roll me a stealth check, and then roll me a sleight of hand check. So roll 2%. Okay, don't worry, right, guys. I'm going to keister this, and then we'll come back to it, okay? I... For those that don't know what keister means, it means I'm sticking it up my butt. In his prison wallet. <laughs> That's right, my prison wallet. I anyway, like that. Anyway, roll me a that. stealth check first, then roll me a sleight of hand. Can I get my pigeon to do a stealth check, or is that something it can't You do? can do that if you would like. I'm 14 on my stealth. Hiding. You can hide in a small bundle of hay, and maybe not get seen. <laughs> maybe not get seen. Um, so, for my pigeon, should I just do a 1d20, because it doesn't technically have... Yeah, do, do just yeah. a regular, straight-up 1d20. Uh, 14. 14 for the pigeon. Same result I got a 21 on my sleight of hand. You, you, yeah, it's hidden. You didn't see anything. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's hidden. It's, it's in there. It's in there. I keistered it good, y'all. I keistered it good. <laughs> Is that even a word? Keistered? I don't I know. So. You came uh, up with it. It, it might be. It might be. <laughs> Let's put it like this. You have a very deep prison wallet. For those listening oh, in right yeah. now, you guys tell us in like the DMs if that's actually a word. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, okay. And how to spell it. <laughs> it would be K-I-E-S-T-E-R-E-D. Anyway. -E -E uh, so, Norbit, I -E? Norbit, you see him first. Um, yep. You see... You see what looks to be like two kobolds. One of the kobolds has a leash around his neck and a chain wrapped around the, the leash. And then mm -hmm. holding the leash is another kobold. It's a female. She has plate mail, kind of. She's wearing glasses. And she has a quarterstaff. Got it. Uh, you, but <laughs> Norbit, you see... You see them pass you, and then Mouse, you see the same thing as it's going up towards Rhaegar's cage, and you see the kobold smack the cage, and it and you literally hear the kobold say, Why down in there? Oh man, I'm thinking in my head right now, Oh no, Rhaegar's about to be next to be geistered by the kobolds. 
But Rhaegar, what do you do? You see this, you see these two kobolds, one with a chain and a collar around his neck, uh, and he's on all fours, hasn't said anything. And you see this, what looks to be like a female kobold, but just spoke in like the most deep, manly voice you have ever heard, but is fully wearing a dress, has these big round glasses on, and looks to be like she's got some like small plate mail, like just simple chain mail on over her dress. Can I make an intimidation check to basically tell them to back the fuck off? Uh, you can try, Ooh. sure. Ooh, if he does that, do they actually Ooh. back up? It depends on his role. <laughs> never, never mind. <laughs> Three? Okay. Uh, yeah, so you go and you're still sitting on your ass from having trying to knock over this cage door. And you basically sound the opposite of what you just heard came out of this cobalt sound. Sound like, like a female being choked. And she's like... <laughs> She's like, Asphyxiation. I said it. This what? episode's brought to you by the letter A. <laughs> and she just, as long get, as I, as she long just, as I don't start it. she literally just gives you like this deep stare and just like slowly turns away from you and then looks to Mouse and then back to you. Wait, to you. wait, she sees me? I'm not hidden? Fuck. Yeah. Uh, so she yeah, looks nice, to nice see try you there, and you're in the haystack. And she can see your tail sticking out. <laughs> My tail! <laughs> Just flipping around. I'm hidden. They cannot see me. And then she turns around teasing. back at you. And then she just kicks the kobold and then starts walking off again. Yeah, you better uh, keep and then walking. she passes by your... Uh, can I, uh, I look sorry. at Rhaegar. Oh, no, I can't say shit. I look at Rhaegar as they had left. I go, did you, you see want, that one that was chained up? Do you, do you He's want such a to do bitch, a performance man. check to try to see if your pigeon will do something as she's walking by? Yes. Okay. All right. I want to see my exactly pigeon will what jump you want to tell your pigeon. And then I want you... my pigeon to jump and try and claw her through the bars of the cage. Okay. All right. While screaming. All right. <laughs> Roll me a performance check at disadvantage, because you are- I attack you! <laughs> I attack you! Okay. Oh, yeah. shit. Then yeah. tell me your roll. Uh, 16. Okay. So, your pigeon does manage to grab- Grab her by the back of her dress and pull her in. The moment you see this happen, the cobalt in the chain- Rips the chain out of her hands, takes the chain, wraps it around her neck, and starts pulling on it. And just starts pulling with all of his strength as much as he possibly can. Hey, Mouse, I think this is your bit to come in. I'm looking out the case like, Asphyxiation, yes, now reach around, reach around. Uh, okay, so Norbit, what do you do anything at this moment for the for your pigeon? Do you try to. Can the pit. Are the bar's big enough for him to drag in the cobalt? No, into the no, the cobalt's a, a little bit bigger than uh, can fit right. through the hole. But is you're... the other one in the reach of the pigeon's other claw? Uh, no. So, like, no. your pigeon is standing behind the cage and has its talons, like, grabbing, like, gr like grabbing the back end of her dress and pulling her towards the cage, and he's just mm. flapping his wings to keep himself afloat. The other kobold is taking his chain and wrapping it around her throat and pulling as hard as he can. Right. All right, mm. so... So what are my options here, then, really? Um, um, uh, apart from, while like, that's happening... Right, Mouse, yeah, while that's do? happening, I like to go ahead and try to pick the lock. Okay, give me while a sleight of hand check. Uh, while he's getting the sleight of hand check, so Norbit, you can do a performance check with disadvantage again to tell your try to tell your pigeon to do something else. Like, yeah. All right. I'll oh, oh, I got a go. seven. Okay. All right. So with your seven, you try to pick the lock, but it's ju it's just too complex for you right now. Yeah, I got a two. Got a two? Okay, yeah, yeah, the pigeon is still grabbing onto her and just flapping. Like, it's still thinking that you're trying to tell it to keep doing what it's doing. Um, yep. But you see the the kobold grabbing her neck, and she's, like, 
like you can see her what would essentially look like her choking and her face mm. starting to turn like a different shade like she can't breathe at all right. he's sitting there pulling and pulling and pulling as much as he can and then finally you hear snap and she's Damn. dead uh he you see life. the cobalt drop the chain look at you and say give me a moment and he rushes off and then okay. a few minutes later he comes back he has the keys he unlocks your door and unlocks Rhaegar's and mouse's door and unties you what about the gog uh, yeah he, well, he, he takes all of it now. off he takes the gag yeah. off he takes the, i want him to take it out huh <laughs> What are we talking about? I don't. I, I like at this point, like I, Norbit, I gotta follow. Norbit, I gotta keep it going. All right. Nor Norbit wants the gimp, uh, the gimp cobalt to take out his gag. The okay, the gimp yep. cobalt takes out your gag. <laughs> yep. There Very you go. submissive <laughs> of <Yep>. you, sir. <laughs> well, I mean, Norbit. Norbit don't know any, but he's he, he's strange. Okay. Anyway. So this kobold opens up your cages, uh, takes down the nobleman from his uh, from being tied up by his feet. Uh, basically, releases all of you. He looks at you and says, "You guys need to sneak out of here carefully. There are a bunch of kobolds standing above you, and the dragon queen is also up there somewhere. Uh, but they tried to kill me with fireworks." And I want nothing to do with this clan anymore. I want to go out on my own. Right. You seem like a pussy. Well, I mean, I... Eh, I wouldn't say I that. Get, can I get my pigeon to peck his legs? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Your pigeon starts to peck at his legs and he's... What are you doing? Stop, stop. What are you doing? Ow, that hurts. Where's our, where's our stuff, man? Like, I can't just leave without our gear. Uh, he says, I'll take you to your gear. But some of your gear was kind of broken. What? Yeah. Oh, you bad. You better not be kidding me, man. Like, my stuff is important to me. Yeah, I'll so, cut you, man. Yeah, he, he said... If there's he even a piece no, of thread said, on my... On my bunch of mess... He said he had nothing to do with it, but he can take you to your gear, and he can uh, get you what was left over back. Do you ever well, hear well, the phrase, wrong place, wrong time? You're the only one here, so someone's got to pay if stuff is broken. I'm going to look at him after Mouse has said that and go, if we find your line, the pigeon will attack. Okay, he says, no, you're good. You're, you're perfectly fine. No worries here. I'll take you to your gear. You can get it, you can sneak out as best you can, and we can get the hell out of here, because I do not want to be here. Anymore. What about the guy hanging up? No, he, oh, he released him too. Yeah, he's like, oh, dude. Oh, okay, he released him. Alright, yeah. um, what about, uh, what about our money? I mean, whatever we, whatever the kobolds took, that's, whatever's left of that, it's going to be in this chest that I'm taking you to. Ah, whatever's Great. left. Never Great. heard that I'm, before. I'm, I'm gonna get my two thousand gold back. I look at I look uh, at the nobleman. Do you like, say right, that, Rhaegar? Going to get our yeah. Do you say what that? was that? Did you say you're getting your two thousand gold back? You fucking right, I am. Did, did you say I look, that when out loud? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, let's say it. Like, yeah. Okay. If he says yeah, it out okay. loud, if when he, he says, says that, I'm gonna look at the nobleman. The nobleman looks at you and says, 2,000 gold. Like, how much did you have before I gave you your money?" Uh, I had 500 before you, we had our little wager, Five, little man. 500? How did you get 500? I didn't even pay you that much. You paid me 1,500 after I beat you in an arm wrestling How contest. The, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't arm wrestle you. I didn't even pay. You like, you I sure barely paid you 30 gold. You sure as hell did, little man. Can you please cover that little pecker of yours before I kick it so hard it comes out your he, damn he ears? He goes and grabs a piece of cloth off of that uh, that dead kobold and wraps it around him. He's like, dude, the mission that I sent you on was only worth 50 gold, and I gave you 30 to start off with. What well, the hell are you uh, talking about? I gave can you I 30? grab the quarter staff? Huh? The quarter staff of the, of the dead kobold. I want to grab the quarter staff. Okay, you can grab it. Yeah, it's there. I, I mean, want the glasses. Is, is there any sort of fucking role I can do to you make can do an inside Rhaegar... check? Yeah, you can do an no, inside no, 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 check. no, 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 to make Rhaegar prove to the the, the nobleman that he's he's telling the truth. That would be persuasion. Yeah, it would be persuasion, yeah. but you would have to roll really high. 
Give me my oh, give me my oh. You have had shit rolls. You better hope this is the crit you've been hoping. Nope. Hacks, I hate you so much what right you, now. What, uh, what wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I want you to tell me what you rolled. I rolled a four. Yeah. So he looks at you and he's like, I, I do not literally know what you're talking about. I paid you guys each 30 gold pieces to start off with to do the mission I asked you to do. Then rewarded you with an extra 20 when you finished it. And then you dumbasses decided to go and kill a bunch of kobolds. And when they captured you, they said that you you told them that you knew a nobleman that could give them all the gold they could ever want. And you sold me out as a sex slave. And that's why my ass is here. Can I that's do an intimidation on him? So nice, huh? Rhaegar, Rhaegar looks, looks at Norbit and, uh, and Mouse, and he, he opens his mouth to say something to Mouse, and he, he closes it and says, you know what, there's, there's no point even asking you to back me up, because you were too stoned and drunk out of your fucking mind in order to know what day or the week it was, and you, pointing at Norbit, well, it, I'm, I'm still not sure about you, you're strange. Can I, can See, I, I point, you, can I, I point told you uh, earlier, Norbit, that when he doesn't get his way, he becomes a so, little bit. So, can, can I point at Rhaegar and, and then point at my uh, pigeon and go, the early bird gets the worm, and then point at his dick? <laughs> uh, I mean, you can if you want, but... Uh, As an intimidation. Uh, so, if you want to roll an insight check on the nobleman to see if he's telling the truth, you can. I can do it, I've got a plus five. I can... It. Yeah, I've so all three of you can roll well. an insight yeah. check to see if the nobleman is telling the truth. Uh, I got I a 12. A okay, so Rhaegar got a 12. I got a 13. Okay. Norbit got a 19. Okay, so Mouse and Norbit, both of you know he's telling the absolute, like, 100% truth. Wait, wait, he was one point below oh. me and Rhaegar still failed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I feel like, like the, Rhaegar I feel like at least the, got high enough to think that he could be telling the truth. Like I it sounds like, the, like uh, he's being genuine, but he's not a hundred percent sure. But I feel like Mouse and Norbit, both of you up. do know that he's being honest. He is telling you the absolute truth. Um well I'm gonna say uh let's let's follow the nobleman to his stuff. And get but the nobleman has no idea where your stuff. Oh at. well, then the co the, the cobalt uh, the cobalt that's oh. that's standing there naked, like with a collar around his neck, knows where your stuff's at. Right. So first of all, I'm gonna take the glasses off the dead cobalt. Second of all, I'm gonna look at the little cobalt and say, "Take us to our gear." Okay. Hey, uh, what's up with her voice? Is it supposed to be that deep? Uh, Andrin looks at you and says that. Uh, she she cast an acid spell when we were kids and thought that it was drinkable, so decided to drink some of that up, and it caused some of her brain cells to melt and also caused to, her to lose her voice, more or less. Can I tap the dead cobalt with us? Uh, you, yeah, I mean, you can carry what it. What reason would you have no. to take a dead cobalt? I, 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 I have a plan later, trust me. I have a plan later with okay. it. But yeah, so this cobalt oh, says this that like dirty. it was her, her brother, and then another guy that they were traveling together, and then he decided to try to become the second in command and failed at it, and because of what he did, all the entire clan turned against him and then started shooting him with like literally fireworks. That uh, that they're still going off outside right now, but you guys can't hear it because you're underground. What? What uh, did you try to do to become second in command? I tried to steal a cane. Cane. A cane. You try. You tried to steal steal a walking stick. A walking stick, yes. From an old man. Uh, yes. He's an old kobold. Rhaegar hey, looks, like. looks at the kobold. Rhaegar like. looks at the kobold and says, "That's low, dude. Even for someone as small as you, that's low." <laughs> <laughs> Like, look, look, I like, be so I like being in charge, but I don't like having to go out and do anything. I would like to be in Chief Gertwag's position and not have to go anywhere and be in charge of everybody. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what was that name again? Was that Gertwag? 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 His name is Gertwag? Chief Gertwag. I don't know. We come up with stupid names Gertwag. here. Gertwag. Oh my goodness, man. Right, so what is your wait, what is your name? My, my name? 
Anduran. Okay, that seems about normal. <laughs> <laughs> What was Doesn't her name? Sound like a toilet name? paper make Anderax? What was, what was their name? And I point at the dead Cobalt. What was Quadria. Their name? Qua- All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm definitely yeah. taking Quadria's body, but <laughs> purposes okay. later we'll figure that out. Depending if the situation comes up, figure that on your own. Man. And if you, what, if, you, if you want to find out what if you want to find out what Norbit does with that dead Cobalt's body, please sign up to our Patreon. <laughs> Pictures oh my DMs. god. <laughs> okay. You think that following content in here is bad? Why didn't you get into the Patreon? <laughs> Where you see the pigeon in the orbit on a dead cobalt. Actually, actually, I'd like to uh, I'd like to advise that the DM remove that little bit out because I'm going to redo yeah, it. No, if I'm you, putting all that in. If, that's good. No, no, because I, I could do a better one. I could do a better one. If you want to find out what Norbit does with that dead cobalt's body, please sign up to our OnlyFans. <laughs> Oh shit, that's up and running. <laughs> oh man, where's my wallet? Uh, <laughs> on, only only fans. <laughs> oh man, but the Patreon was pure, just like there. It was All right, so the, the right, Cobalt so. looks at you guys. Are you guys ready to go? Because I can take you right to it and we can avoid getting caught. Have I got Quadra's Volta? I um I hand I mean, him yeah, that piece. I mean, of, you you can carry yeah. it on your shoulder. Yeah, then I hand him that, that piece of piece of metal first. I hand I give it to him like here in case you 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 know you get locked up. Here's you something to get yourself out. <laughs> He's gonna look at this piece of shitty metal. <laughs> but I'm kind of curious as the DM. You, like you haven't even asked or questioned why your pigeon is suddenly like three times its normal size. You know? I'm just not even gonna question it. So much weird shit's already happening. <laughs> Um, yeah, like a lot. I, Considering that we are expecting I, to get 500, but then he said he was only going to pay us 50. Yeah, and on top of that, I was tied up and gagged. You know, um, my pigeon growing in size is not exactly uh, weird. It's like one of those. So, it's like one of those little dinosaurs you throw in the bathtub to expand. Yeah. So he, uh, if you want to, you can ask the uh, Andoran about what happened because he knows everything by now. What one pigeon? Well, not your pigeon about your about you being gagged and tied up and what why you, you know guys what? are I down here. I'm just gonna let my imagination take over. Okay. Sure. Yeah, um, I'm going to ask him along the way to our gear. That, okay. That's what I'm asking. All so right. So fill us in. Okay. All right. So I'm going to for the for my players. They have a map right now that they can see of the dungeon. I'm going to move them to where they know where they're they're going towards. Uh, but for those that are listening in right now, so basically they come out of this long hallway, and uh, in front of them there is a set of stairs that lead up to where that it looks like it goes back up to top side. But then to the right and left of them is two other hallways. Uh, the cobalt says that we have to go to the right. So you guys follow suit, and you guys come upon this like really large uh, door. He opens it up, and there's nobody in here. But it looks to be like kind of like um, a storage room where the cobalts keep all their stuff and everything, like their supplies, their food, and everything. Uh, in the far left room, uh, there is where the chests and stuff where they keep like their weaponry and everything. But then you also see that there is another hallway that leads to the right away from where the uh, the main storage is at, and it's got a door, but you don't know what's behind that door right now. But you you see several chests laying about on the ground. He goes over to one, uh, Andrin does, and he opens it up for you guys, and your gear is all in there. So if you guys would like to see what's in the chest, you guys can if you would like to. Damn right, I like to see what's in the chest. All right, yeah. so you rummage through the chest. So your rifle mouse is still there. Your sword is still there. But your bow is broken in half completely. And your arrows are no longer there. Like, uh, excuse me, lizard doggy. Um, uh, <laughs> what is this? Uh, why is my bow broke? Uh, he says that the one th- that that he's carrying, the quadria... He says that she broke it. Oh, that one broke it. Oh, so it wasn't you, you say? Oh. No. Yeah, he says that he was made into a slave, so he's literally not allowed down here unless directed otherwise by his quote-unquote master, uh, which was answer. her. Good answer. Her. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. 
Um, awesome. But yeah, so your sword is down there. Your rifle is in perfect condition. Like, they didn't want to mess with this thing. They were scared of it. Um, right. And your rifle is completely, looks completely untouched. Your sword looks like that it had been unsheathed at one point. Like, they were looking at it. But they threw it back in here because they thought that their shit was better. <laughs> Uh, but your bow is completely broken in half. Like the uh, the qua- the Andoran said that Quadria broke it. Uh, uh, I would like to take the uh, the string off of the uh, the bow, the um, cord or whatever it's okay. called. Uh, sure. Okay. And sure. I will dispose of the pieces. I will take that and I will. Do I have my backpack in there? My backpack yeah, your backpack. All, all of your your backpack, backpack and everything. Else. I will put it in my backpack. So I'm gonna add that to my list of items. Okay. Is what would I call? Is it just a bowstring? Yeah, just a bowstring. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go and tell about what Rhaegar sees. Rhaegar, so your your weapons are also in here, so both of your, your great axe and your hand axes are in here. So your weapons mm-hmm. are all there. However, something does catch your eye. Uh, you see... Is it booze? No, it's not booze. <laughs> uh, you see uh, hanging from underneath the chest, separate from everything else... Looks to be like a necklace, and at the end of the necklace, looks to be like a wooden carving of a bear's paw. Ooh. Give me. Uh, you take it. You suddenly feel like you're being protected, like something is watching over you, but you don't know what. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I go to the um, the nobleman and try to uh, persuade him to uh, get, pay us to get him out of here? Uh, I was about to get to that with Norbit. Oh, no, I was going to, like, talk to the Norbit, uh, not Norbit, the, uh, the nobleman about paying us for this job. Otherwise, we're gonna leave. Oh, this is not a job. You guys literally... Oh, it is. It is now. It is now. It is is now. (laughs) All right. Uh, I want my let me, let me gold. tell what Norbit sees first, and then we'll get to that. Okay, so, Norbit... Your backpack is in here. Your weapons are also in here. Your shield is also in here. Oh, and then uh, roll me a insight check on your backpack. Oh, fuck. All right. Um, let me find my insight real quick. I appear to have misplaced it. There it is. 15. 15? There are three bags in here that look to be like coin purse. Can I see how many, what's in those three bags? You can. How much is in them? 50 gold pieces on in each bag. And the bags oh. are different. Uh, All right, um, Aus, Rhaegar, uh, you both see him pull out those th- those three bags. Uh, Aus and Rhaegar, you noticed instantly that one of each of those bags is your bags. I'm going to take my bag. Well, I was just going to give it to you since it was yours. Um, uh, Rhaegar, you look inside, there's 50 gold pieces. I turn to the nobleman and you say, hey, Dickless, where's the rest of my money? I told you I paid everything that you were owed. Fifty no, gold pieces. No, 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 no. You need to you fix need this. To fix. I think he's telling the truth, but I have an idea. If you want to get out of here with us, then you gotta pay us for this job. Okay. All right. Okay. So look, let's all calm down. Let's all calm down. All right. Look, if you guys really want some more money, if that's all it takes for me to get you guys to get me out of this hellhole that you guys put me in, by the way, I'll give you each of you a hundred gold pieces each. Chicken with a pigeon, slop a pigeon's ass considering, and he flies away. Considering we don't really know what exactly have you and you can you can tell we are completely we think you paid us two like two thousand gold. Like, obviously... You know, I don't know where you know. got this concept that you got 2,000 gold. <laughs> who in their bright I don't mind know, Ray- suddenly gives you 2,000... Rhaegar- who gives you 2,000 gold for arm wrestling? Like, Can- who is stupid enough to do that? Rhaegar can hold his liquor. I'm going to account to that, okay? I, I don't remember exactly about this arm wrestling you talk can, about. But uh, I'm going to say, like, you don't want to anger him? All right, he throws people. Hey, he doesn't do it in a nice Tony, way. Tony, yeah. Is the nobleman wearing anything of, like, extremely high value? Like, any jewels? He is, like, any... all of his... He has a loin like, That was about to get to that after Norbit, because all of the gear that he... That you saw him wear before you guys got wasted is in that chest, but it's completely destroyed. Everything is wrecked. All of it. All right. Can we... Can I take the chest? If I chuck that on the back of my pigeon? 
No, the chest. This is a big chest. This is super. I would. Ma I would make you so roll. A trunk. You would have to roll a strength check, and if you yep. care, if you carry Quadria with you, you would roll it with disadvantage. Can I just put Quadria in the chest? That's what I'm saying. If you put her in the chest, you're going to be yep. rolling with disadvantage on a strength check. So you in other words, you in other words, it's going to be other. really heavy. It's going to be really heavy. It's you're extremely be heavy. Chance of, of running disadvantage. It, like can I can make it to where it sound makes sense for you to carry one or the other. No, if you, if you got both, Rhaegar no. to carry it, yeah. So if you try to be the to patch mule. Well, I mean, I technically have a pack mule, a pigeon. I was just going to shove it all on there eventually. Your pigeon, but, would, your, your pigeon you know, would not be able to carry both of them at fuck. all. Well, I can put one on the pigeon and carry one myself. You I? could tr you could put the you could put quadria on the pigeon, and yep. the pigeon will still be able to fly. But if you try yep. to put the chest on the pigeon, the pigeon will not be able to fly at all. Do we ever get a place where we can just like store stuff? Uh, you don't know yet, but you can do an insight check on each of you. Rhaegar kind of already is suspicious of what like happened when he picked up the uh, amulet. Nineteen. Okay, you feel stronger, and it is oddly suspicious that your pigeon just suddenly grew three times its normal size. 19. Your amulet that was that you found is like protecting you. What does a 22 get me and what am I insiding on? You're insiding on yourself on like your like how you feel personally like cuz what well, normally what you should feel like me? super weak like you should be beaten up and stuff. It's really kind of odd that all of you are at full health and you haven't been tortured or anything. Matter of fact, all of you feel like you're stronger, and you don't know why. <laughs> uh, but Norbit, Norbit but got Andrew a little. says, <laughs> like, like, he looks at each of you, and he kind of gets this notion like you guys kind of, like, suspect something different about each of you. He said, I mean... To be quite fair, you did kill half of our clan, so... Right, a... Well, first of all, I'm going to leave the we chest, because I can't think of a good purpose to deck it over the mean greedy. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get that out of the way. Uh, can I uh, can I go through the uh, the broken pieces of uh, the nobleman's gear? See if I can find of anything of value, or is he... You, yeah, you can, you can also do that, if you would like. Um... I want you to roll a perception check. 14. You see um you see what looks to be like a odd looking gem that's attached to the broken breastplate, but you don't know what kind of gem it is. You just know that it's shiny. I pry it off. Okay. Take the gem. I take it. Uh, Everyone else is like, it's mine! Do you, so do now this one right here, it's mine! So you just take it, you you don't even be stealthy about it? Fuck no, I'm not gonna stealth in front of that dude, it's gonna be part of my payment for getting him out. Well, and then the nobleman's like, the nobleman's okay, look, like, like, fine, you can have the gem, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll throw in the extra hundred on top of that gem, too. That, that gem alone is worth, like, another 200 gold piece, so, whatever. It, my armor's destroyed anyway, so... I'm not getting out Can of I, here. Do I need to do like uh, some kind of check on the jam to see how, like, if he's telling the truth or you if can I do an out inside check it? to see if he's lying to you? Uh, uh, well, not well. So I'll see if he's not telling everything he knows about. Yeah, the gems he can. Or, yeah. You can do an inside check on the nobleman. Is what I'm saying. Got a nine. There's my low roll. Uh, you. I mean, he he wore the armor. Don't know. It's shiny. Obviously. It's a shiny gem. Obviously. It's gotta be, it's gotta be worth something. I'm just gonna pocket it and be like, okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Alright. But yeah, so each of you feel like, for whatever reason, like, you don't remember exactly what happened, um, but he, Andrin tells you that Rhaegar and Mouse pretty much single-handedly wiped out their entire clan because they tried to kidnap Norbit uh, after saying that he was a robot, and they were going to use him as a power source. Can I question the noble? Uh, can I question him and ask him like what, like why would they need a power source? Power? Oh yeah, you, uh, 
So uh, the Dragon Queen is... God, you're going to tell me without making me roll for it. Oh, this is my lucky day. Yeah, so the Dragon well, Queen... They have been, uh, they have, the Dragon have Queen kind of likes shit. to have very flashy things. But no, nobody here... Like, I've never seen her, so I don't know what she even looks like. I, I just know what's been told to me. And all I know is that she likes flashy, expensive things. So... Well, she is a drag. If she's a dragon, then yes, you know, they Can, normally hoard jewels. I don't want uh, I was going to say, the broken piece of armor, are they still shining? The broken piece? No, no. The armor is completely busted. It looks bad. Oh, like, never mind they that. destroyed this armor. I was going to decorate Quadra's body in the shiny armor, but never mind. <laughs> Yeah, it's not this so, armor. This armor is not even where the only way you would be able to get anything out of this armor is if you took it, brought it to a blacksmith, had them like melt it back into its original form, and then re-smelt it into uh, armor again. But that's going to be quite expensive for you to do that because this is expensive armor. Um, I have an idea. So, uh, I take. I go to the body of the dead, uh, the dead cobalt, and uh, I say a small little prayer, you know, you know, you know, because she's passed on. Trying to be disrespect- respectful before I do something very disrespectful, and I take her clothes off. Okay. <laughs> Jesus fucking give, Christ! Give me a re- <laughs> give me a religion check. <clears throat> I got a seven. Fuck. So you don't necessarily feel or hear anything but you have the slightest notion that you feel like that uh father would get a kick out of this oh yeah father would get a kick out of this i'm gonna go ahead and take the but i'm doing it for a good reason okay there is a good reason i'm doing something very disrespectful for a good reason so all you perverted minds out there this is not what you think it is Okay. Or is it? it no, really or is, is. it? <laughs> only way to find out. Is to join, only way to find out is to join the Patreon, where we go and talk about. That's your- right. That's right. <laughs> all right. We're gonna meet the rest of this. All right. I know. Um. All right. So the reason I'm there taking it to close off is the the noble man. His armor's broke, and everything's broke of his. Right. Pretty yeah, much. Lie. I'm t- so he's not wearing lie, clothes. You can't. Lie, he's not you wearing clothes. You literally can't even put this armor on anymore. That's how busted. Yeah. Up this armor so is. he has no clothes. Yeah, he, like he is literally. I am getting, I'm getting the dress off of the off of the dead cobalt, and I'm gonna have him wear it. He's already <laughs> wearing it. He he ripped it in half what? and used it as a loincloth. Oh yeah, when? Early. Oh, he Early. did. Yeah, he ripped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he ripped part Damn. of the dress off, and he's wearing it. As okay, a then I don't take then I don't take the dress off. I'll leave it on, but I will say a prayer. I did say the prayer. That's fine. Okay, um, sure. But yeah, um, I'm trying to be I nice say- for him. You know, and also getting a kick out of the fact he's wearing a dress, but he's wearing a loincloth? That's just... What can, is? I, can I just say, out of um, the D thing, uh, if people want to, like, do fun art of Norbit carrying this naked dead cobalt, go ahead like, and send Just do fan art of all of these characters at this point, like... What's up, my dick? Oh, that one needs to be done with this yes. little cobalt on his knees. Like, I swear to God. All right, anyway, so all, all of you have your yeah. gear back. All of you. You got all of your stuff back. You each got your your uh, money purses back. They have 50 gold in each of them. Uh, Mouse, of course, you got the extra thing with the gem. Uh, and the nobleman says that if you can get him out of here safely without him getting him killed, he'll give you an extra 100 gold each. Uh, Tony, I've got a question outside of storyline right quick. Okay. Um, I have an uh, action. It's an action called Action Surge. It says take an extra action. Okay, I have no, to use an action to gain an action. That is for combat. Is- I know, I know, I know. This is not for that. I'm not. I, just, I said out of storyline. Okay. Action surge okay. is an action that I have to take as an action to get an action. Okay. No. All right. So here, here's how action surge works. Okay. So say you're in the middle of combat and you take your your shot with your rifle and you miss the first shot, right? But you want to make sure that you hit at least once. You can waste your action surge to attack again and get a second action. So you get two actions by activating action surge. Okay, well, it just says it's an action. So I was like, yeah, so I have to use my of, action to get it. Like, I was like, action, what? Think of action surge as giving you a second action. So it's, a, so it's a trait. It's not an action. It's a trait. No, it is an action. You fully get on a That's second really, action. So I would have to use, like... 
because you can really even confusing. go as far as to say use... that like let's say that the first shot you made was a crit and then the second thing you wanted to do was like tie a rope around his ankle or something you could do that oh yeah okay okay so yeah so even if i don't have an action i've already used my action how can i use an action ability if i don't have an action that's what i'm it's trying to get at. It makes you no that sense. extra action okay okay it's okay, giving okay. you that it's it. giving you that's what i'm saying it's like, it's like you're refilling saying, your action just, so once you use your action for the turn you can yeah. say okay well i want to do another action so i'm going to waste my action surge and it refills you back okay. up and gives you your action. That's what I was again. saying. It was just where it's located at. It's just throwing me off because I was like, yeah, like so, what? Yeah, no, it's giving you your action again. So you're getting two actions uh, by activating your action surge. Got it? Sweet. Um, what is the, uh, you know what? Never mind. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So again, like, And Andoran has basically told you that this is everything that was in the box. All of your gear is returned back to you. Uh, and he says he knows how to sneak out of here without getting caught. But if you guys feel lucky enough to go up topside and try to go that route, you can as well. So I've got a question about the kobolds as a, a race, species, however you'd put it. Uh, what would they consider like a fallen member of their clan? Would that be like a sacred thing to have for like a burial or however they'd go about that? Okay, they're very tribal. So yeah, it'd be like, normally speaking, uh, uh, they would consider it sacred for their members of their clan to die off and they have a ritual that they do for that necessarily speaking. However, in Andoran's case, because he betrayed the clan, they could give mm. two shits about him. That, like, yeah, no, he, I'm not about Andoran, though. I'm on about Quadera. So, theoretically speaking, if I was to offer them Quadera's body for safe passing it out, would that be a potential route? That could no, work? they would likely kill you. Okay, yeah. Okay, that I might as well... No, I'm gonna keep Quadera's body still, but, um, yeah, no, that was my entire plan. I went to shit. Um, I'm done for whatever then. Okay. Are we up? Uh, are we topside now? No, you are still below in the dungeon level. So, um, was there? There was a. You said there was a second hallway that we didn't go. Yeah. To. So there's two hallways. There's the hallway to the right, which you guys went into, and it's basically a storage room. Uh, they keep all their food supplies and their weapons in here, so it's kind of like a two for one kind of deal. There is a door. That is leading past the storage room where the food is at, leading into another room that you guys don't know what's behind there. Then there's the hallway to the right, or the, to the left, of where you guys came out from the uh, the uh, prison cells at, that you guys also haven't explored. And then straight ahead of you, at that point that you got out of the prison cells at, you literally saw a set of stairs that you knew just from looking that led upside. That led to the right. top side. Okay, um, so did, said there was food in here, right? Yeah, I was going to say, did anyone roll a perception check in this room to see what was her? Yeah, you can roll a perception check to see what's... See what we find? Like. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking when you said that. 18, because I was thinking you said food and not initially. I got a 9. Okay, well, alright, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell Norbit what he sees. And yep. then uh, Norbit, so... The weapons in this weapons room that you're currently at, you can tell right off the bat that they are nowhere near the quality of your guys' weapons. So it's kind of mm -hmm. weird that they would go in and destroy like something as like expensive and high quality as the nobleman's gear. Yeah. Uh, or my bow. Or your bow. Uh, that would hard. Like, most of their gear that's in here looks to be like old and unkept and looks like that has just been stolen from people uh mm. the room where the food is at you can also tell that this is like mostly just meats that's all it is right i've got a theory for um for the rest of my party mm -hmm. why if that pain from the previous from the what is it gerfwag what if that's not just an ordinary cane? Because, <laughs> I mean, if all the I mean, other weapons are just shit... Do you say that out loud? Because Andrin is standing there, so he can kind of inform you a well, little we, bit. Well, we don't really know about the cane. I'm speaking more of all of a character as, like, a curiosity okay, thing. Okay, all right, yeah, that's thing. fine. Uh, um, I'm going to... Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. I'm just thinking, like, if all the weapons in here are shit, right, then why's he got a cane? Is that, like, 
a super powerful cane or something that we should potentially go for. He's old as fuck, man. I mean, the guy could probably not walk without it, so... I mean, he hit us with it, it's a shit ton of damage. We don't know that. Correct. Yeah, no, you guys don't know that. He hit yeah, cold balls with it. Balls with it then, yeah. yeah, but we, we, don't, we don't know that. Like, he just, you know... Like, all yeah. we know that they, we've been told is that it was, like, a pain, it, like, cane is power, so... Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm basing this off of more than So, anything. uh, Tony, is, like, how much meat are we talking about? Like, a lot of it looks to be, like, fresh meat, so there's, like, a few shelves here or there that's got some fresh meat, like it was just put down here within, like, a day or so. Mm. But then there's other meat that's down here that looks, for, like, Norbit at least, it looks to be rank. Like, it's not even good to eat. Not even I go sure. back to the dead body and I rip the dress off. No, wait, go back. There isn't no dress on it. Yeah, well, you said you ripped the dress in half, right? So the other and half part of the is dress still there, is right? ripped. Yeah. Um, so I take what's left of the dress and I make kind of like this. Uh, I, I guess I tie off whatever like hole there might be and just put as much of the good meat into it as I can. Okay. And tie it off and I toss it to the nobleman and have him carry it. Uh, okay. He's, he looks at you and he's like, okay, fine, whatever. And he picks it up and carries it. Um, awesome. I say, I say we investigate the other room on the side of the building we're in, just to see what's in there. A Andrin says that that's, that's where the secret leads, but he does say that we need to be careful going down there because there's a lot more dangerous stuff down there if we're not careful. Uh, cool. than I like dangerous. That then up top side. He said that potentially you guys will that if you were to fight it out, you guys could get out easier and less unharmed fighting the kobolds. But if you didn't want to fight the kobolds and wanted to avoid them all together and be sneaky the entire time, you would go through that room. Can I ask Underrun if there's any special weapon rooms? Uh, he look. He looks at you and says, "No. Like the the ones that have the best weapons are up, upstairs right now." Do we want? Do we want to fight the kobolds, or do we want to try and sneak out? Because if we fight the kobolds, we've got battle. Like, I'm a guessing, but us up to the full party, not just me. Honestly, I like to get out of here. You know, like get my money, go back on to working on an adventure, doing some missions. I don't need time to deal with some lizard people that have some sick fantasy about worshipping some kind of dragon god. Oh, wait. Scratch that. I just don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, no, no. Rhaegar just want to get the hell out of here so he can go and get a drink. I guess we follow a uh... Under onto the secret exit or whatever. The okay, so you guys is. want to go to the secret tunnel route? Yeah, yeah let's get the yeah. fuck out of here okay. before we get sacrificed to. All right, keep so looks like a goddamn. You guys go through that door, and the moment you go through the door, you see what looks to be like just a simple square room, and then at the floor base there is a sewer rack. See, Andoran goes over to the sewer rack and goes and lifts it up. And there's a set of, like a, like, a ladder leading down. And he says, down this way. Go down there. The room that you get into is dark, but you can tell right off the bat, even with it being dark down here, that this is not an ordinary sewer. This looks to be, like, a labyrinth. Oh, uh, you hate this already. Yeah. Uh, All right, I'm going to roll perception. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna join you on that one. I I am not laying this thing. I'm, I'm gonna be rolling perception a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna join you on that one. <clears throat> uh, you can use your bird to, to scout for us. I could. It has uh, got sixty do... feet in dark vision. Okay, so so yeah, you could you could have a scout for us ahead while we're hanging back a little okay. bit and let us know. So what's ahead. Nor Norbit, um, <laughs> I don't even know if your race can actually smell anything. But I'm going to say that just in my world, you can smell flavor text purposes, right. but yep. it is rank down here. It, like, the moment you entered into this room, you know that death is down here. It smells like the nobleman's ass in here. It smells like the I inside got of a my mama's ass. Mouse, same, same thing. Same. Mouse, exact same thing. So, Mouse, your instincts tell you, like, every fiber of your being tells you that there's something down here 
that you do not want to mess with. BBEG. That literally, this entire place is filled with death. Um, Rhaegar, so, you're just wanting to get drunk, and it smells like ass in here. So does Andoran know his way directly to the exit for, for a minute? Here, Andoran no? says that he knows he he has a general idea, but he's not 100 percent sure. So he's going to have to go in and get you guys to go to a certain room and ask for the grandmother to give them give you guys the map. Right. Yeah, I, I say we stick with Yarple on the mouse of getting the pigeon to go and scout for us. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm okay with the map as long as we don't bring that dead body. Because... Well, I mean, it, couldn't we, yeah. if anything attacks, couldn't we use the dead body as, like, leverage to try and sneak past it afterwards for a lot in front of it? We also have meat that the nobleman's carrying. Yeah. Oh, we could get the nobleman to carry him both and use him as bait. Well, he's gonna pay us. Yeah, I mean, we don't want him to if, be killed. If, we just use him as I bait. I know. Well, that, that's usually what happens to bait, is it gets eaten. True. Alright, yeah, fine, fuck it. I'll throw the dead body, I guess. Okay. What about the meat? You doing the same with that? No, no, the nobleman's carrying that. He's going to continue carrying that. Because even if we don't use it, it's really good meat. It's really so nice. So the nobleman is carrying probably sell the meat. It. Yeah. Yeah. Can't sell the dead body, even if it was in chunks. Okay. All right, no, so the okay. pigeon will go first, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, so I need uh, Norbit. I'm going to make you roll a perception check for pigeon, but do not add your modifier. So it's just 1d20. Man, right, it does say in like skills rip. for the still defender that it gets a perception plus four. Yeah, mayhem. You might want to like uh, you might want to ready yourself just in case since you're yeah, what, like sure tanky, okay, I didn't tanky know guy. That. Yeah, add plus yeah, so, four to your perception. Yep. Yep. Uh, as Norbit, I'm also going to equip my shield just yep. to clarify. Right, so your so AC go. goes up to twenty. Twenty. Yes. Okay. Uh, I got a 24 on my first one. Okay. Literally, max so, I could get. Your pigeon goes down the end of this hallway and flies over, and it kind of curves to the left, and there is a door there. It's a gate, and it looks to be like the same make as the gates that uh, you guys were trapped behind in the prison room. Um, I'm going to follow my pigeon on that one. Wait, so it's like a prison gate? It looks like, like a prison, prison gate, cell? yeah. Yeah. Like I a cell, like a cell door. It's like a cell door. Yeah. Uh, do we want to go into that? I mean, if it's exactly like a cell door, maybe it's I keeping mean, something in. I also have thieves' tools, so we can always lock pick it to get through it. But I mean, if the pigeon went straight is, there, if the pigeon went there, then there's something. There's something that is at least of of like. Well, of my pigeon worth. can't be surprised, so my pigeon's going to be going in front of us anyway. So if it goes through right. the door first, it's not going to get surprised, and it'll see whatever it is. So all right, I guess we send it in and let let's see what it brings. You're sending it the pigeon. The, you're sending the pigeon in. Well, we're going to catch up to where the pigeon is, and then we're going to okay. send the pigeon right. in. Okay. So you come around the corner and you see that gate, and it is yep. closed, but it doesn't look like there's a lock on it. All right. Well, I'll open the door oh, and okay. send the pigeon in. Yeah, you cr you open it up. Do you do it stealthily, or you just open it up? Uh, I'm gonna say stealth. Wait, is my pigeon stealthy at all, or is no, it just like a no? You didn't roll a stealth check for it. You just rolled a perception. All right, I'll just open it then because at this okay. point, my all pigeon's right, you gonna hear it creak shit. open. It sounds like that it like this door has been looked at or worked on for several several years. Uh, inside of this room, it's also dark. It's not lit up at all. Uh, so you guys can barely see in here. Uh, do you go into this room? I send the pigeon. All right, it's got works. sixty foot dark vision. You're, you send your pigeon in. Yeah, it can see for sixty feet in darkness. Okay. So roll a perception check for your, the pigeon again. I'm gonna I'm gonna light a torch, Tony. Okay. Twenty two. It sees down at the end of the hallway to the left that there are eyes looking at it. There's several oh small God. eyes. I put out my torch, Tony. I put out my torch, <laughs> Tony. Okay. Um, put out your the torch. Gonna... The pigeon's gonna fly back to me. We're gonna shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stand there shaking my head, looking at my party members, going, "Do I even want to fucking know what I just, what you just saw?" Hey, it's not me that I've seen it. It's the pigeon, but it looks scared shitless. It's looking at us and it's going, "Flop, flop, 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 flop." <laughs> flat, 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 flat. So none of you I'm know, sorry, none sorry, of you I'm know sorry. what he saw because he can't communicate with his pigeon. He cannot he, like. Well, my pigeon speaks any language I do. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, so the pigeon can tell you what it's all. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the pigeon literally just speaks English to you and or common and tells you what it's all. It's all a bunch of eyes. <laughs> yeah, while while going flop 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 flop. Um. Yeah. So we sh- we are gonna shut that gate. I reckon. So like a plan, boys. <laughs> So, are you going back up, or are you going through this gate? Is that the only way? Yeah, that's the only way in. Fuck, so we've got to go through the So, eyes. either you go through this gate, and go through that room, or you go back up, and go face the kobolds. One of the two. Let's, let's face death together. Yeah, let's go face Andoran, the fucking eyes. Andoran's still, uh, still with us, right? Yeah, Andoran's still with you. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna grab Andrew by the throat, lift him off the ground, so that he is literally eyeball to eyeball with me, uh, he's and like, I am de- uh, I am demanding that he tells us what is in that room. He he said, "I can't breathe." I'm not I'm not gonna let up. If he if he if he can get out, can that, get much, out that much, then he can tell us what's in that room. There's rats, rats. Oh, what oh, other the things? Other things. How, what? How big are the rats? I don't know. I don't come down here on a daily basis. <laughs> God, please let him go okay. down. I like that's so wrong. I uh, yeah. I look. I look to Mouse and uh, I say to Mouse, "Be thankful this isn't you." And I throw Andoran through the door, the open door. <laughs> You throw no, we close the door. door. We close the door. So you, you, you close the door. <laughs> Weary, so you just you throw him into a door. The door. He, just slam, him he into slams on the door. Uh, make a strength check. I want to see how much damage he's going to take. Wait, oh, if you're a mouse folk, isn't that I can? Folk? I can Tony. I no, 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 no. Eleven. Eleven. Is a difference. Okay. I'm a he humanoid takes two mouse. Of damage. Uh, a difference. I can depending on how. I have, depending, that's what I was getting to, depending on how big they are, I can speak with small beasts. Okay, he, so Andrin, after he gets his voice back, he's like, look, I don't come down here, like, on the daily basis. This is just no knowledge that this is down here. But there are very large rats down here. There's, there's, the monstrosity is also down here. There's a bunch of stuff that's down here that, like... Would a... A, would a would that be considered a small beast, Tony? Those rats? You don't know. I don't like the sound of all. Okay. Well, he did say. Well, he did say that they were they were big rats. But I mean, like how big? Like, that, that, that'll determine he, he if he te- knows his rats down here. Tells you he that knows. the rats, the rats are the least problem that's down here. That's okay. not what I'm asking. I'm asking how big they are. I don't my know. I don't live from- down here. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're saying it there, big rats, you know. So, are they big or are they small? They're big. You could just say rats. They're rats. Like, they're how big. big? I'm small compared to you. Like, what do you want from me? Small Except for you. Me, and he points to you, mouse. Said, like, you're the same size. So, I would consider them big then, if they're big to him. If they're really bigger they're big to, to, if they're, they're bigger than me, they're big. Yeah, I can't talk to those. No, they're no. Yeah. Hey, well, maybe I mean, if they were like probably the size of a dog, like a small. They're not that big. Oh, they're not that big? Okay, no. so they're just overgrown rats, but not like gigantic rats. Yeah, they're not like the size of a dog. They would be, they're, they're really big rats, but oh, not. Oh, so I could possibly talk to them. You, could I peek my head through the door then and try you, to communicate with them? You would have to literally go through the room and go to the end of the hallway. Ah. Because it's dark. Well, guys, it was nice knowing you. I'm going to head to the end of the hall real quick. Okay. I'm sending the pigeon with him as backup. Sure. Uh, sure. send the pigeon in front of me as backup. <laughs> You've got more help than my back, pigeon. It, it can okay. be backup if so, it's in front of you. So, with... Fine, I'll be backup. <laughs> with the pigeon, the pigeon leading the way, uh, Mouse, you follow suit, and you go to the I end have of a the torch. hallway. I, I lit my the, torch back on. You put the torch on? Yes, I lit my torch back on before I headed in. I want to do that. I don't... Because, like, you know, before... It was a bunch of eyes, and okay. I didn't know what to do. Roll I didn't me a want perception check. But now... Roll me a perception check. I love my pigeon. I just want to soak for 22. a 22! You see at the end of the hallway, there's... These rats are roughly a little bit bigger than you, but not by much. 
and they're feral. Yeah, can't talk today. He's okay. And, and roll initiative. <laughs> uh, well, Wait, how many are they? You didn't tell me how many. There's, there's, there's three rats. There's three. Gotcha. There's three rats. There's three rats at the end of the hallway uh, right now. All right. As I'm rolling initiative, can I, sh- can I yell back to my teammates? Yes. What I see? Yeah. Guys, I got That's three bad. ferals. I can't talk to them. Get your asses over here. Uh, we rush. I'm gonna rush over. No. Oh, what's your initiative roll? Mine. You're. Ro- you have to roll for pigeon too. I. I got. I got, uh, no, I got a yeah. fifteen. I got fifteen. But yeah, Norbit, you have to roll initiative for pigeon because it, it takes your initiative roll. So whatever you roll, that's your initiative as well. So I'm just rolling one d twenty plus two twice. No, you're rolling it once. Whatever you roll, that's what. Oh, it gets, gets the same. It. it gets the exact same. Uh, twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, I so got 21. Mouse, what did you get? I got 15. Okay, Rhaegar, what did you get? 21. Okay, Norbit and Rhaegar, what's your dexterity? Dexterity, oh fuck. Uh, two. Okay, plus Nor- two. Plus two? No. Norbit, what's yours? Plus two. Plus two? Okay, it's we a roll We got the same roll. Yeah, it's a roll off. It, whoever had the highest dex would be the one to go first. But because so you now have they the gotta roll a d20 again. Off, just roll a 1d20 with no modifier. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what well, there's our, critical, there's our critical fail for the night hole. Uh, <laughs> Rhaegar got a 1 and Norbit got, got a 13. 13. Yeah. All right. So the order of operation is that um, Norbit will go first, Rhaegar uh, will go second, Mouse will go third. So Norbit Pigeon actually goes at the same time you do. And the way that this works is, is that you, in order to give a command to your Pigeon, you have to waste your bonus action in order for you to be able to have Pigeon do anything. So the yeah. rats attack last? Where, where were the rats the Rats at? attack last. Yeah. Okay, making sure she didn't mention them, so I was yeah, assuming. Yeah, rats attack last. All right, All right so, um, so Norbit, keep in mind that you, you can do your action as yep, normal. and then... Then, if you action. want to use your bonus action for pigeon, that's how you command pigeon. It's through your bonus action. Yep. Got yeah, yeah. Um. So, are we in combat now with these rats? Yeah, you're. You don't see them where you're standing at, but you're technically in combat. Yes. All right. Um. Wait. I thought Mouse had a torch lit. Uh yeah. He has a torch lit, but you're not in the room. You're still at the door. All right. Um. Well. Uh, you, you just uh, know that they're there because Mouse yelled it out to you. Yeah, well, pigeons. That's so why I'm and gonna. Pigeon is also there. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna move up towards them. As that'd be my action, right, or is that a movement? That's it's a movement. movement right? Yeah. So I'm going yeah, so to. I'll move up. So while you're telling me what happens, I'm going to go ahead and placements for everybody. So. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna move up to them, and will I be able to see the rats then? Uh, yeah. If you move literally like ten. Yeah. So I'll do that, and I will attack one of the rats. Uh, so you're gonna move the full uh thirty yeah. feet. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Just a second. I'm just going to attack it with my saw. Yeah, go ahead and make an attack roll against one of the, the rats right quick. Uh, 1d20, right? Whatever your attack roll is. Oh, all right, go ahead. So I need two plus three. I did a 1d20, not thinking. Okay. What'd you roll? 23. Okay. That's uh, dirty 20 plus three. Okay. All right, so you do hit. Yep. Uh, no, no that's two. not a dirty 20. That's a crit. Yeah. Oh, well, crit. That's I don't a crit. Know different. I oh, crit. crit. Okay, yeah. Oh, crit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So your damage is doubled. So the way right. that it works is, is that you take your, um, your weapon damage. So your damage is 1d8 plus 1. You'll roll yep. 2d8 plus 1. All right. Sounds good. Uh, 12. Okay. Uh, so one of the, oh, hold up. Wait. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. Um, your modifier, the plus two, was it originally a plus two? Oh, no, plus one. Oh, it was plus one originally? Okay, okay. I was just making sure because uh, I was yeah. going to say like, it, it doubles as well. Okay. So, yeah. Right. No, right. So, right. so you, take, you take out one of the rats. Yep. And you swing into the other one. Uh, so, for those that are listening right now, I'm adding cleave damage uh, into the campaign. So, he swings into the first one. It kills the first one. And you do a total of uh, one damage to the other one. And as my bonus action, I'm going to use Force Empowered Rend on my Steel Defender, so he also attacks. Okay. All right, so roll your attack for your Pigeon. Yes. Sorry, uh, just crit on this pigeon. one, too. 
Yeah, I'm trying to see if my pigeon has an attack modifier over it. It'd just be mine, won't it? Uh, no, it me, wouldn't. Let me make sure just in case. I think. Yeah. So your melee no, weapon no, no, attack no. plus your, four to your hit. Your attack is 1d20 plus four to hit. So it's 1d20 plus four. D8 it's four damage. So I got a 10 on and the actual attack. Hit. Yeah, you hit. All right. And then a 1d, um, and then a 1d what? Uh, 1d8 plus two. This is going to take me a while to get used to. I'm just going to throw it out there. Well, all of you are new, so it's not like that. Or... And it got a crit, technically. <laughs> yep. Oh, well. It, well, it got six plus two. Um, yeah. So eight know. damage. Okay, so you badly injure the second one. It's still mm. alive, but barely. Uh, the other one is fully healthy. It's it's still right there rummaging around. So is that That's your turn? That's my turnover. Yep. All right, so now we go to uh, our good friend Rhaegar. Rhaegar, I want to use my breath attack. Okay, so you're gonna, gonna move breathe on feet. it. You're gonna move thirty <laughs> feet and then breathe on it. Right, breathe lightning, dumbass. <laughs> it's gonna breathe on it. <laughs> All right, so do your breath attack. Let's see if you hit. Uh, two d six. No, no, no. That's damage. Okay, so what's the what? You roll a d20 plus your attack bonus to see if you hit. God. No, 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 stop. I have to make a dex save. I have to make a dex save. Nope. I have to make a dex save. Oh, wait, you're using a spell, aren't you? No, it's it's like a spell. It's like, okay, so he's a dragonborn, and he can breathe, like, a certain element, depending on what color his skin is, and he has lightning breath. So I have to roll a dex save to see if I take half damage or full damage. Uh, I oh, take half gotcha. damage. So roll two d six, and whatever you roll, I take half that. That's kind of strange that the Cobalts would kidnap him to sacrifice him when he's technically you didn't find that out. Dragonborn. You didn't find that out. I know. Uh, like it's very strange, though. Like I'm thinking about it out of game, out of character. Yeah, you didn't find that out. You guys decided to go the other route. So, uh, seven. Uh, you yep. fully kill one of them, and the other one is badly injured. Who knows? They probably were going to make you their king, man. Yeah, they're puny. I don't like them. They can die. All right, so uh, that is your turn, Rhaegar. I need, technically, Pigeon is, well, no, Pigeon moved up because you used your bonus action. Mouse, I need you to roll me a perception check. Eight. All you hear is the nobleman scream. You turn around, and he's gone. <laughs> Andrew what about my meat? The, the meat is gone as well. The, the nobleman is gone. You hear a scream. You don't know what happened. Uh, Andrew is still standing right behind you, though. He was right. noble not. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Uh, wait, there was no other way out of the uh, out of the way back that direction, right? Uh, you didn't roll high enough. Oh, high no. Enough. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like to... Is it my turn yet? Uh, yeah, technically. I wanted to... How far am I from the door? Uh, from the, the door you entered into? Yes, from where the... Like, he got could, kidnapped from over there, right? You're, yeah, I want to go to wherever wherever he got kidnapped from. That's where I'm okay, going. Okay, move about 15 feet behind you. Okay, uh, I would like to roll another perception check to see if I can tell where he went. Okay. Or what happened. Maybe, okay. yeah, perception, right? Yeah, roll another perception check. Yep. 13? 13. You look above you, and there's a great... Above you, that's open. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I look back at my party and I go, "Do you guys got these? Do y'all need my help?" I'm gonna let Norbert answer that. Um, I order, think y'all have it. So I think y'all are good. Y'all got one that's almost grade, dead and one that's full. In order to reach this great without having to like make climb checks, you would have to have Rhaegar or Norbert come over and pick you up and put you inside of it. It's too high, it's too high <laughs> up. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't just make a grappling hook with the rope and uh, and something couldn't else. I just couldn't. I just send pigeon over towards him so he could just climb up pigeon. Essentially, you could have pigeon lift him up if you would like. Yeah, but I would have prefer to that, you and I can do. still do. Yeah, uh, you can do a grap. You can see if you can do a grappling. Thing. Um, actually, I think I'll, I'll help out, and I'll take- I can still see the enemies from where I'm at, right? You can still see the one rat that's left over there. Oh, there's just one left? I thought the other one was just No, wounded. there's one that- no, two of them are dead, and one of them is still alive. They're oh, okay, I'm gonna take my rifle, and I'm gonna take a shot. Okay, alright, so shoot at the rat, and remember, you get a bonus. Okay, there you go, yep. 18 hits, so roll your damage. 20! You fully kill this thing. 
Like you straight up just sweet. Wait, you roll two d ten. Why did you roll two? That's what it says. Two d ten plus three piercing. And I get plus two to my attack bonus. That's attack because of. Where's it at? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You got a right. Yeah, crack okay. shot. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah, two yeah, plus yeah, two yeah, bonus yeah, with yeah. roll no, firearms. Yeah, yeah. Two d ten plus yeah. three, and then gotta, I add that yeah, two okay. to make it plus five. Okay. I thought it was one d ten. That's my bad. Okay, yeah. So oh you, no, yeah, you fully kill this thing. Yeah, you fully kill this thing. It, it explodes. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> is there blood all over Rhaegar? Guts? Uh yeah. Like it. it you literally like got blood <laughs> everywhere. Send your pigeon over. All right. So you guys are technically out of combat for now. But, sure. Mouse, you're underneath this grate. The grate is open. And all you know is that you heard the nobleman scream. And the nobleman and the bag of meat are gone. I'm all right. Um, a way I could do this is if somebody gets me up there, I can tie probably tie a rope off. And uh, uh, that way y'all can climb up. Oh, no, they can't way. fit up here. Oh, only I can go. Sweet. Yeah, yeah you would be by oh. Yeah, you would be by yourself. That's here. fine with me. Uh, Andrew fine says me. that he thinks that he knows what might have took it, but if if what he thinks took it took him, it take him. He's already dead. I'm I'm trying to go for my meat. Your meat will probably also be gone. That's okay. I'll cut it out of it. Uh, he, sa- I, he says if you want to go it? find it, I know where its layers at. But I'm going to warn you, it's not going to be pretty. Can we ask you take about them, it? I'll go this way. Okay. All right, so you want to go in the grate and the rest of the party go to... Yeah, the- I feel like if yeah, if I go in the grate, they can be led to the uh, to the, to the layer that way. Well, here's the thing. I can you don't know where you're going. That's fine. I'll Andrew figure it out. I'm the only I'm one sure. here that knows how to get there. What do you do? Hold on. What did I roll for perception earlier? You, ro- you rolled a... Uh, oh, I rolled an eight. If yeah, I get up there and I roll in the perception, could I potentially tell which direction it went and follow it? You would be rolling perception checks pretty much at every turn. Fine by me. Okay. All right. So, Norbit, do you want to take your pigeon and help him up? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, uh, mouse, you get lifted up by your pigeon and you're inside of this grate. The grate is completely yeah. pitch black. Like, it is completely 100% dark. You have no actual well, I have my vision torch. in this grate. Remember, I saw my torch. You're, you can have the torch, but you are going to be moving at half your speed. Wow, how small is this grate? It's pretty small. I'm only two. I'm it's two pretty feet small. small. How did the nobleman fit in like there? You, if we like, on? if you. If That's you, what I want to say. How big is the nobleman? Yeah, so the nobleman is. It's it's big enough for you to be able to crawl through here, but if you have your torch with you, it's not the fact of its size of the grate. It's more the lines of you trying to scoot with your torch and holding the torch while moving at the same time. So it's it's like you're you're on your hands and knees and you've got yeah. one hand holding the torch and the other hand and your knees helping you move. So I'm going to reduce your speed by half if you hold the torch. If you get rid of the torch, you move at normal speed, but you can't see. I mean, that's fine. It's just, okay, I mean, whatever. Yeah, so if you have the torch, then you won't have to make as much perception checks, and you will be able to see. However, you move at half speed. If That's you remove fine. the torch, you do not, you do not, you cannot know what you're seeing, and you'll roll more perception checks, but you move at full speed. So either which way, uh, you're at disadvantage. First perception check, I roll 16 to figure out which direction they went. Okay. You can see on the f- where you're crawling at right now that it looks to be like like green slime of some kind that leads in the, the direction of it. Oh, lovely slime. Uh, okay, I'm going to follow the slime. I'm going to let everybody know to... Uh, you said that... Uh, did he tell them that he knows where the layer is? Like He knows well? where the layer's at, but he is literally right. trying his best to avoid going there. All right. Well, he's gonna have to show y'all where it's at. I'm gonna follow this to try to find the uh, if I can find a back door to wherever it's at. All right. So I'm going to erase you from the map, and I'm going to make it to where that we do you separately. Okay. Fine by me. All right. 
So, Rhaegar, Norbit, you, both of you and your pigeon are in this room with, um, uh, Andoran. Can I ask Andoran what it is that he was talking about previously? He was said, yeah, he I said that he's never seen it, but he knows that it, it's not to be trifled with. That there are stories about this thing it, within the Kobold clan, and it, it's like the most dangerous thing that they've ever come across. Like, no kobold that's ever gone against this thing has survived. But he um, does know somebody down here that knows how to get to that lair, and that's where he's going to take you to. He's going to take you to, and he tells you that he's going to take you to the Rat King. Uh, I guess we fall, I'll follow him, though. Okay. The Rat King is the boss? No, the Rat that King... Took- the, no, the Rat King is the guy that he knows that lives down here, that knows where the oh, player's okay. at. Uh, there, there's gotcha. essentially two different people down here, uh, apart from the monsters. There's the grandmother that he calls, which is a kobold old lady that lives down here. And then there's the Rat King, who he tells the party that he's literally insane, but because he believes that the rats love him, even though they try to eat all the time. This is a very Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles feel to it. We've got Master Splinter that we're off to go see right now. Like, think of Master Splinter, except that Master Splinter is insane and he cannot keep his kids under control. And the got kids it. are rats instead of turtles. <laughs> I was about to say show. something. I put, I pressed, was about to say, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> think of the Rat King as Master Splinter raising a bunch of rat children, but the rats completely hate them like a teenager would. Rats. And he's also completely utterly insane. Like, he's like just Dude, flat out lost rats. to shit. <laughs> Rodents in a half cell. <laughs> in a half cell. Alright, so do you guys go to the Rat King? Sure. Okay. I will. Yeah. Okay. You follow him, Rago? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, how long does it take them so I can start making checks for... So oh, for, every, for every for uh, every every room that they get to, so I'm gonna say every thirty feet that they move at at fifteen uh-huh. feet, I'm gonna have you make a check. Yeah, that sounds about good. Okay, let me know when I when I need yeah, to do I'll, it. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know immediately when you have to make a check. So okay, so uh, Andrin moves past the rats and goes to the end of the hallway and turns left. What do you guys do? Just Rhaegar and Norbit. What do you guys do? Follow him. Okay. All right. So you guys go. Uh, you get to the end of the hallway. On the right hand side, there's another gate, and then to your left is what looks to be like a curve into leading another hallway. Um, Can I push him around the corner to make sure that the ghost is clear? He's technically already at the corner. Yeah, but he's not around the corner. Yeah, yeah, he's standing there now. Anyway, so he's around the corner. Do you guys uh, go around with him, or do you just do perception checks first, or what do you guys do? Uh, uh, but okay. I'll do a perception check real quick. Okay. Oh, I'm curious. Um, I got a 14. Yeah, I got so an 8. got an 8? Okay, so with yeah. a 14, you don't hear anything. Uh, Rhaegar, you're just following the lead. Yeah, I'll keep All my right, log so At the this point, you have moved roughly about 15 feet. Uh, you're at the edge of the hallway now, where, uh, Andrin is standing at. There is another long hallway. It's still dark down here, but you can tell that there is another room at the end of this hallway, because the hall- the hallway is not that long, so there is another large room, uh, about- Roughly about 10 feet away. I'm gonna ask my pigeon if it sees anything down there, because it has 60 Are you gonna send the of- pigeon out first? No, I'm just going to ask it what it sees down there, because it has 60 foot of dark okay. vision. It's, it sees the large room, but it also mm. sees that in this room, there's like a pit in the middle of the room. All right. So you'd have to walk around the pit. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right, so you guys go into this room. House, I need you to roll me a perception check. 17. 17. Okay, if you turn left in the grate, and then turn right you'll be heading in the same direction they are. It's almost like you can hear their footsteps, like, below you. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, all right, so I'm going to say you're roughly at the same area that they're at, so I'm going to move you guys there. All right, so Norbit, uh, Rhaegar, and the Pigeon all see the pit in the middle of the room, and I would like for each of you to make perception checks on the pit. 21. 16. Okay. Both of you got high enough to notice. 
This pit was not man-made. It was made by whatever is down here. And it's large. Very large. Scary large. Okay, so what's like the diameter of the pit from edge to edge? Okay, so from edge to edge, you would have to kind of do like Indiana Jones style and kind of walk sideways around the pit just to get to the other hallway. So no, that's what I'm saying. Like, fit into right, this what is crawl this? space? The one now? How did it fit into the crawl space? Right. You where, don't know uh, that yet. Is. You don't know that yet. It's a fucking shape shift or a slime or something. You don't know yet. Oh, it's gonna be. Meanwhile, uh, Tony, uh, can I roll? Uh, because of the slime that I'm following, can I roll to see if I know exactly what created that slime? Uh, you can roll a nature check to see if you can notice something. Uh, I got a five. Uh, yeah, you don't really know. It's just, like, it's nasty, it's sticky. It smells really bad. Like, it smells horrible. What happens if I taste it? Uh, <laughs> you die. Uh, it, probably. I'm not gonna yeah, taste it. I'm not I, gonna... I was fixing to say, I would highly advise that. Okay. Alright, so, you get to the edge of this room, and like I said, the pit is is big enough to where it covers pretty much the majority of the room. There is enough space to where that if you walk sideways, like, like you're, you're doing Indiana Jones style across, like, an, like the edge of a mountain kind of thing with a walkway, you could move sideways and get around it and go to the other hallway, but there is a door that is literally five feet that if that Andoran is almost at and he can open it up and get you guys to another hallway. So do you go through the door or do you go or do you ask Andoran if you're going through the door or are you going around? I'm I'm just gonna go follow Andoran again. Okay. Yeah. Have some trust in this little goblin. All right, so Andoran does open the gate, and he, he turns to you guys and tells you to come this way instead of going to the other hallway. So oh. he leads you down past this hallway, and uh, I need the two of you, Rhaegar and Andoran, to make perception checks again. I'm not going to lie, I thought you were going to say he turns around and spot kicks me into the hole. 11. Okay. Uh, 21. Uh, Rhaegar, you don't notice anything. Norbit, you do hear skittering, uh, near you, like, in the hallway to your right, once you come, or to your left, excuse me, to your left, as you come out of this door, but it looks like it's skittering away, like it's going in a different direction. Did I notice what it was, or did I just hear it? You just hear it, yeah, you can't see anything down here, like, your pigeon hasn't even gone through the door yet. Uh, uh, when we say scattering, do we mean like, like little feet? Or? It sounds like feet. Yeah, it sounds like. Right, feet. So probably another rat then is what I'm gathering. Uh, um, yeah, because if you had said like, oh, what do spiders have? Okay. Like, spider think, skitter? I, well, that's what, I, that's what I was questioning. And I'm like, could it be a spider? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I it might know. be. You don't know. You just know you heard skittering. Yeah, right. um, I'm just gonna keep following under and personal okay. until. So Andoran uh, goes right to thing. this other door. That is literally five feet away. He opens it and he turns around uh, past this door and goes to the left of what you guys are looking at now. Uh, he goes through this hallway. Uh, do you guys follow suit? Well, no. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you come around this door and go through this hallway and come through a, the lat. It's an open door. There's no gate here. Go through this door. Inside of this room, several sets of stairs lead up to this giant pillar. So if you can imagine it, it, it would look like that scene in, uh, in Lord of the Rings where you see Gollum for the first time, where it's surrounded by water, and then in the middle of the water, it's that little island that he lives on. But in this case, instead of water, it's just the ground, and then it's got like a pillar leading up. And at the top of that is kind of like what looks to be like a small little tent. And there's a man sitting at the edge of this tent. He's holding a rat like he's he's like cradling it. But this rat is like gnawing at him like it's trying to get out. It's like biting at him and it's just eating at him away and causing them to bleed everywhere. Uh, but he's still holding this thing and he's rocking it back and forth. 
back and forth. And then he hears Andoran come in, looks towards the door, and he says, Oh, I have guests. Uh, Mouse, I need you to roll me one final perception Good check. Good luck with a psychopath, y'all. And I'm in a crap up. space. Roll me <laughs> one last perception check to see if you can manage to find where they are. Going Click them in the hut. Well, I'm the not hut. heading to where they're heading. I'm heading to wherever the slime leads me. So, is it heading in the same direction well, as them? Well, you, you I'm initially not following stated them. that you're, fo- you're basically going to try to follow them because Andrin knows where... No, I said I was is following the slime to find out which way the other... The, I'm trying to find okay. the, okay. the right, monster. Roll, well, still roll me a perception check, uh, just to see if you can follow the I say, this dude been leading me in the wrong direction. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. Yeah, you do see the slime, but you, you're, you have to head right, and you kind of faintly hear it, but it sounds like the footsteps you were following that you can assume was your party is heading straight ahead of you. Okay. Uh, either go right or go straight. If you go right, it leads Which way does the slime? The slime goes right. I'm heading right. Okay. And right. I would like to do a acrobatics to see if I can move faster to w- with this real quick. Fast, like, what do you mean Faster in the tunnel. You can't. See if I not can. With some, I can't. I'm not allowed. What? I can't roll it. No. Like, what? That's what, I, I, that's what I said. I gave you an option. You either carry the torch. Or I know, you. but I was going to do acrobatics. That's what no. I was asking. Yeah, no. It, with the torch, you can't do that. That's why I gave you an option. Well. All right. So, again, uh, we're going to cut it to where that, again, so Andrin and Rhaegar and Norbit, you come into this room. You see this this odd-looking shaped pillar that leads up, and at the end of the, the top of the pillar... You, there's, see, there's several sets of stairs leading up to it. There's a tent at the top of it, and at the edge of the tent, you can see this this human sitting um, at the edge of the tent holding this giant rat that's gnawing at him, and he's just rocking back and forth, and then he turns to Andoran and says, well, it looks like I have this today, and then that's where we will end our session. What's going on, everybody? My name is the Mayhemvo93, and I play as Rhaegar, the dragonborn barbarian, over here on the Dirty 20 podcast. If you'd like to see more of me, then feel free to head on over to my streaming channel, twitch.tv forward slash the Mayhemvo93. As well as that, you can always check out my own tabletop role playing podcast, Guardian Down, on YouTube. The channel name is the exact same thing, just without the 93. I hope you enjoyed the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, because we've had a great time uh, creating it for you, and we would love to hear some feedback down in the comments below. Hello, my name's Ellis, uh, otherwise known as Eli in the Discord of the Dirty 20 podcast. I play Norbert as well as one other character for a short time. And uh, if you want to find me anywhere else, twitch.tv forward slash lscw. If you want to come on out with me there. And uh, I hope you enjoy the podcast. Thank you so much, guys, for listening into this podcast. We at The Dirty 20 greatly appreciate uh, your time and effort into uh, listening to our story as it unfolds for our esteemed players, if I do say so myself. But uh, I would like to take a few moments to go in and do my own plugins for my own personal stuff. So not only do I do the Dungeon Master uh, work for the Dirty 20 podcast, but I also stream on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Zeno. I play a variety of different games. One of them in particular that I'm very well known for is playing Eternal. Uh, but I do also play a variety of other games. Uh, I currently am into playing Path of Exile, uh, a few shooter games, stuff like that. Uh, but I play a variety of different stuff. Just depends on my mood, really. But you can also f- uh, find me on Twitter at gaming uh, underscore shuffle. That is the uh, the tag that I have chosen for myself for my Twitch channel, being the Southern Shuffle Gaming Group. 
Uh, so you can find me there at gaming underscore shuffle if you would like to find me on Twitter to follow me there. Uh, anything else referring to plugins has to do with my uh, Dirty 20 stuff. So if you would like to look for all of that, just look for us on Twitter at Dirty 20 underscore DND. Uh, that's with an N, D N D, all capital letters. You can find us there, find all of our plugins for that. And uh, we hope that you will continue to enjoy the rest of this podcast.